On the docket tonight, a case uh, we've been talking about for many, many years at this point. It was a horrific case involving the massacre of a family. Eight members of the same family, all killed, execution style in Pike County, Ohio. Joy Limnacrin, Court TV legal correspondent, has more for us tonight. It was a crime that terrified a rural Ohio area. Eight members of one family all murdered in what would be dubbed the Pike County Massacre. This is a horrible tragedy uh, that has occurred here in, in Pike County. Each one of the victims appears to have been executed. Each one of the victims appears to be shot in the head. The youngest of the victims, just 16 years old. Their bodies found in four separate homes spread across three different locations more than 20 miles apart. The complex crime scene suggested a coordinated attack, a mystery that prompted law enforcement to appeal to the public for clues. I want to urge anyone, any citizens that has any information concerning anything involving this horrible act to contact the Pike County Sheriff's Office, where we have BCI agents there. They're following up on every tip that comes in. The investigation required resources, staff, and a lot of patience. It was two years before charges were announced. At the center of this case were members of one family whom we believe the evidence will show conspired together to kill these eight people, eight of their friends. George Wagner IV, along with his brother Jake and his parents Angela and George III, were all charged in the mass shooting. This is a very much a family affair. All for one, one for all. Prosecutors say it all stemmed from a dispute about custody and control over the daughter Jake Wagner had with 19-year-old Hannah Mae Roden. Hannah was one of the victims, along with her parents, 40-year-old Chris and 37-year-old Dana, plus her uncle, 44-year-old Kenneth, and cousin Gary, 38 years old. Hannah's brothers, 16-year-old Christopher Jr. and 20-year-old Clarence, as well as his fiance, 20-year-old Hannah Gilly, were also killed. Hannah and Jake's child was spared. She, along with another child, were the only survivors in the massacre that claimed the lives of eight of their relatives. We believe that the Wagners conspired together. They studied the victims' habits and their routines. They knew the layouts of their homes. They knew where they slept. As George Wagner IV stands trial, his mother Angela and younger brother Jake are expected to testify against him. It's not anticipated that you will ever be released from prison. Do you understand that? I do, Your Honor. Jake is turning state's evidence in exchange for life in prison without parole. But there was another component of the deal. Prosecutors agreed not to seek the death penalty for him and the other members of his family charged in the crime. Ms. Wagner, does that sound like an agreement that you reached with the state of Ohio? Yes, Your Honor. Jake's mother, Angela, has also reached a deal with prosecutors. In exchange for her testimony, she will serve a term of 30 years. She speaks vividly of recalling speaking to Jake and George and um, asking if they were sure that they wanted to go through with this. But the family testimony could be a double-edged sword for the state. The defense expected to argue George Wagner IV did not shoot anyone the night in question based on his brother Jake's own confession. Their father, George Wagner III, will also stand trial at a later date. How are these relevant to the crimes for which Mr. Wagner has been indicted? Residents of this rural Ohio community will be watching and waiting for justice. Okay, let's bring in our think tank and talk about the dynamics here. Ann Bremner, um, family versus family, but now it's, it's the same family we'll be battling also here at trial nice. because you've got two members of the family, mom and the youngest son, testifying against the older son slash brother here. Um, to me, this is a, this is a, a tough case. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's incredibly tragic, the, the enormity of the crime here. But now you've got family members turning as family members. And it, it seems to me like that should be powerful evidence. Right. I mean, talk about a family affair as it was characterized, Danny. I mean, it truly is. And with especially Jake, I mean, looking at not having the death penalty, but getting life for a number of life sentences. I, I think with the mother and the son testifying against other family members and something this horrific, I've always said when I was a prosecutor, in horrific murder cases, it's like the burden of proof goes down a little bit for prosecutors. You know, it's like the jury takes a leap of faith, you know, and says, you know, we're just not going to let these people go. I mean, 
over a custody dispute of all things. That's how it appears to me. It's just unbelievable, this case. Unbelievable. And I think um, the family affair is, is going to be one that takes down these family members who are standing trial. Yeah, uh, Michael, it's another indication that and I always say this, when you go to a courthouse, the most volatile courtroom is not the criminal courtroom, it's, it's the family law courtroom where people are very emotional and it seems like prosecutors are saying um, that was the motivation here to wipe out eight members of the same family. Yeah, then it's, it's probably one of the reasons why I have no intention of ever practicing family law. Uh, the one or two times I've done it pro bono for a friend here or there, it just, I, I realize once again why I don't like to do it. Uh, because it does get really personal, really emotional. Logic sort of leaves the room. There are times where emotions run the day as opposed to logical conclusions that work to the benefit of everyone. Uh, so there, there oftentimes is, you know, this, this, this inflamed emotion in dealing with family issues and family matters. Uh, and it seems like that was the case here. And, and, and it appears that this family dispute got the better of these individuals based on the testimony that the mom and the brother is going to provide. Yeah, Rick, you talk about that testimony. It's mother testifying against son and brother versus brother. Tragic, man. It's very tragic. But I think the, the overall intent of at least the younger brother was to try to save the lives of all of his family members. Um, I think it's going to be uh, it's, it's going to be interesting, I tell you, because he takes credit for five of the eight murders. And then you have the other brother saying that he didn't kill anyone. And so it's going to be interesting as you come down and hear the testimony and how the uh, how it all plays out. Absolutely. Uh, it's a tough one. All right, let's do this. We're going to take a break. Oh, first I got to tell you when the trial is. Here, take a look, folks, because it's just around the corner. It's been years, but now finally, uh, August 29th, Ohio versus George Wagner the fourth. Um, the drama, the heartbreak, the sorrow, the tragedy inside that courtroom um, is, is going to be uh, something to witness and see how the jury takes that evidence. Will they believe the mother and her son, or will they believe the story of the defendant?